Hi, and welcome back to Reflect Forward. I'm your host, Carrie Siggins, and today is an advice from a CEO episode, and we are going to talk about complacency and what it's like to be mediocre. And I'm going to give you my five top tips on getting complacency out of your life so that you can be the best leader you can possibly be. Because let's face it, if you allow yourself to be complacent, you allow yourself to be mediocre, And being mediocre is not what's going to drive your success. It's not what's going to make people love and respect you. You have to want more from yourself. You have to expect more from yourself and your team. And you do that by not falling into the complacency trap, not letting mediocre performance from yourself and from others uh, continue. You need to address it because, again, what is tolerated becomes what's accepted and then what's expected. And I know that you want to be a phenomenal leader. And to do that, you just cannot let yourself be complacent or be mediocre. So I'm going to share my top five tips and some stories around how to put them into practice. So my first one is always ask for feedback. It's the number one way to avoid complacency. Feedback can be such a great kick in the butt. I think I shared this on a previous episode, but I did a leadership competency model uh, and assessment with my leadership team, and I took it myself. And the place that I scored lowest in was feedback enablement, my comfort level on stepping into uh, giving tough feedback. And I think that it comes very specific for me. It's when I have to discuss performance or really telling somebody hey, you're not doing a great job and you don't have what it takes to be able to move to that next position. That's tough for me. I always want to give people chances. I am so appreciative of the chance that I was given when I was young and a complete mess that I always feel like, oh, if you just give somebody a chance, they can do anything. And I've learned that that's just not the case. But I've made mistakes by allowing behaviors and underperformance go on too long because I'm trying to give that person a chance, trying to show that I believe in that person and it doesn't work out. And so this feedback that I got about my own ability to step into that feedback was a kick in the butt. And here is what the consultant told me. He said, the reason that you haven't grown this company faster, even though I'm incredibly proud of the way that we've grown Stone Age over the last decade, is because you have not stepped up and told people that they don't have what it takes to be at that next level of leadership within the company and then done something about it. Now, this really stung, but I was so grateful for it because I thought about it. I was like, he's right. Have I, I know I haven't always put the right people in the right seats on the bus and, and I've made hiring mistakes and I've tried to make things work too long and it's been to the detriment of my own performance and the company's performance. And this was exactly what I needed. I said, there is no way that I'm going to let my feedback enablement impeditive uh, hold me back from growing this company the way that I know that we can, for developing people the way that I know that we can, and for putting in the right people when that's what we need to scale as a company. It was such a good kick in the butt. Not that I was being complacent in that area, but I certainly wasn't always comfortable stepping into those conversations. And I allowed for mediocre performance. I allowed for a little bit of complacency and I could have scaled faster uh, and maybe more productively if I would have made some of those decisions earlier, some of those hard decisions earlier. So anyway, that's why you should always ask for feedback. Of course, you have to take action. You have to take it to heart. But if you feel like you're being complacent, that you're allowing yourself to be mediocre, go ask for feedback from a trusted source. Tell them to not hold punches and to really give it to you straight and use that as fuel to propel you forward to make different decisions in your life so that you aren't complacent. The next thing, look for a new endeavor. There is nothing that breaks complacency like trying something new and going for it. So an example might be you want to look at growing your business in a new way. You might want to take on a new type of activity, a new business unit, build a new product. Uh, going in and doing research, deep diving into the market potential of that, you know, how you would build a team to scale that, what kind of resources would you need to pull away from other parts of the business to be able to, to invest in this area? 
Those are all ways to not be complacent, to take on a new endeavor. I'll give you an example of when we did this at Stone Age, we decided that we wanted to not only be the leaders in uh, water blasting tools, but also in automated equipment, robotic equipment, eventually IoT, cleaning equipment. And so we had to make a tough decision on what that looked like. And that one decision to go and be the leaders in that space created a cascade of decisions that we had to make that have taken our company to the next level. There is no complacency when you say, I'm taking on a new endeavor and it is going to change the way I do things. It's going to shake things up. In my case, it was building a whole new business model, changing our dealer relationships, selling direct, developing new equipment, bringing on new services such as rental and, and managed repairs. All of those things dramatically changed the organization. And if we would not have made that decision, we could have been stuck in complacency, just keep doing the same old thing in that core business and failing to take advantage of an opportunity that was put in front of us and really change our business to scale our business to, to make sure that we are future-proofing our business by going forward. So that's my second tip is take on a new endeavor. Third, Anticipate changes in your industry. This is so important. So many leaders get complacent thinking that what they've always done is what's going to work in the future. And you can see with what's happened with the pandemic that that is not the case, right? We were all forced to dramatically change the way we work. Well, you don't need to have something like a pandemic or you know a major natural event or major industry event cause you to get yourself out of that complacent cycle. You can be trying to anticipate what's going to happen. So we all know, for example, AI is going to change the way that we work. Jobs are going to dramatically change. Maybe we don't understand exactly how, but we can start to anticipate that. So then you can say, okay, if these types of jobs are going to be done by AI, things that are very repetitive, that a machine can do very well, how do I help upskill my employees? How do I upskill myself to make sure that I have the talent and the, uh, the skill sets and the knowledge to be able to take on this new way of working, to be able to bring multiple things together that AI can't just do something really well? That's a great example of, of a way to start anticipating the changes that are going to be facing your industry. In my industry, for example, we, we all know that water is a very precious resource and it's going to be harder and harder to clean using water, uh, using clean water at least. And so I've really got to be anticipating that in 10 years, you know, there might not be clean available water to do the cleaning of all the facilities that make all the things that, that we use. In fact, I even just learned that it takes like 400 gallons of water to make a t-shirt, a cotton t-shirt. Water is an issue. So I'm trying to anticipate what that looks like so that I can be ready for what happens when we cannot be using as much water to clean. Um, and that causes us to not be complacent. It looks, makes us look at investments in our business. It makes us look at potential acquisitions. It makes us look at, you know, how do we diversify outside of this industry so that we can survive whatever major changes are coming. And that right there always drives the 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 need to move forward it kills complacency when you are trying to anticipate what's coming around the corner and you say no the next thing read a book read a book in your industry read a book on leadership read a book a business book get inspiration at least every single week if not every single day and then implement it so i just read this amazing book right here like my favorite book that I've read in the past year is called Lead and Disrupt, How to Solve the Innovator's Dilemma. This book was so filled with fantastic information on how to exploit your current business and also go after new opportunities and what it takes to be an ambidextrous leader, a person who can exploit that core business, who can stay focused on doing what's always made us successful, and making tweaks to that to be able to grow, but also not saying, oh, I'm not going to go after this new opportunity because it doesn't look like my old business. Maybe it's not as profitable. Maybe it's going to take more investment. Maybe it's outside of my area of expertise, outside of our core business. But I think this is what it can bring to the organization. I love this book. Um, I have... I have changed several things about my thinking and about the way that I'm leading and developing people 
based on this book. I try to read a book a week, so I'm always filled with ideas. When you are getting new inspiration and then you put one little thing into action from each of those, you can really see how it impacts the organization. You can really stay up to date on on all different types of thought leadership and uh, and information and new ways of thinking that can force you to think about new things uh, and to think about things in a different way. And that helps me avoid complacency. I will tell you, reading is the number one thing. And finally, my fifth thing for avoiding complacency is to stop drinking your own Kool-Aid. I know of so many leaders who think that their organizations are doing great, that their culture is fine, that they, the way they've always done business is what's needed, that the story that they've told themselves about their competitor or about another person in the industry or another company in the industry is true. And that's why we are doing things the way we always have done. We're really successful. Look at our past success. You know, that's why we're continuing to go this way. Don't drink your own Kool-Aid. Be willing to look deep within your organization and within yourself and say, there's a lot of things that we could be doing better. And there's a lot of things that I might believe that we're doing a really good job at and might be failing. But if you don't stop drinking your own Kool-Aid, you might not ever know that. You might think, oh, we're the leaders. We're number one. We're doing a great job. And you are increasing your chance of being disrupted. So if you don't want to be complacent, don't drink your own Kool-Aid. Look in the mirror about the things that you don't do well and do something about it. Go talk to your customers, go talk to your suppliers, go talk to your employees and ask them, what can we be doing better? Where are we failing? Where are we drinking our own Kool-Aid and missing the bigger picture? That right there is the actual number one thing that you can do to avoid complacency is to stop drinking your own Kool-Aid. So these are all things that I put into practice in my life on a daily basis. It's what drives me to keep doing what I'm doing, to become a better leader, to look at my flaws, to admit my mistakes, to think about things in a new way, to challenge myself, to think about different viewpoints, to let other people shine and really rise up with new ideas and new ways of doing things because it's going to make us better as a company, put my own ego aside to say, I know that I can always be better. I know that other people around me can help me be better, can help make the company better. And I'm never going to let myself be complacent in this. I'm never going to let myself think that I know it all and that I am per impervious of making mistakes. Uh, I always take a real look at myself and my business and say, what can I do better? What can I do better? Where am I complacent? Where am I allowing for mediocrity? And how do I move through that so that way we can always be a better version of ourselves the next day? So hopefully that's inspiring to you if you take one of those tips away. Uh, even if you just put one into practice, I can promise you it will help you be less complacent and not settle for being mediocre. Okay, my question of the week comes from somebody on LinkedIn. And he says, I've been told that I come across as aggressive in meetings and that people are afraid to speak up. I don't think I'm being that aggressive. I think everybody is too, being too sensitive. What should I do? Okay, so the first thing is, is somebody who gave you that feedback, say thank you. Thank you for giving me that feedback. That I know that that was really tough. The second thing is, is maybe you should just take a minute and believe it. Before you write it off and say, I don't think it's true. I don't think I'm being aggressive. I can promise you that if someone said that, that is what their reality is. And you want to be able to address that reality. That's their perception. Their perception is their reality. So you should make sure that you really understand how you're coming across. And the reason why I say this is that I once had an employee who made crazy, angry facial expressions in a meeting. He would just get this thinking face and he'd just sit there and just, you know. And one day I said to him, hey, I just want you to know that the facial expressions that you are giving in a meeting are shutting people down. It looks like you're angry all the time. And uh, it's really causing people to not say something in, in the meetings. And people are coming to me saying, hey, I think, you know, this person's name is angry all the time. And he said, what are you talking about? And I said, all right, well, let's, let me hold up the mirror. Let me show you what you're doing. And so I said, you know, when you're getting really serious, what, you know, what do you do in a meeting? And he puts his hand on and he 
it looks like this. And I held the mirror and he said, what do you think you look like? He's like, I look like I'm mad. Yeah. It's like, but that's my thinking face. It's when I'm in deep thought. It's when I'm really trying to listen to what the person is saying. Okay. Well, that's not the message that your body language is, is giving. And he told me, no one has ever told me that no one ever. And I've been doing this for the last three decades of my career. And so how many relationships did he potentially damage or how many people were shut down or just never said anything in a meeting um, because they didn't understand what that facial expression was like. So he was able to go in and tell people, hey, this is my thinking phase. I'm not upset. I'm really just trying to listen. Please don't take it personally. I'm going to work on my facial expressions as well. So hold me accountable. But it's going to be hard to break this habit because I've been doing it my whole life. And that changed everything. People were so much more open to his, his facial expressions. People would go, oh, so-and-so is, is thinking again instead of being mad. And it changed everything. So I give this advice to you or to, to this person who asked this question because you might not know what your body language is, 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 is putting off. You might not understand that the tone of your voice is coming across as aggressive or sharp or demanding because that's not how you hear it in your own head. So assume the feedback to be true and go exploring, go ask questions, record yourself in a meeting. Literally, you can just hit record on your phone while you're in a meeting and let it play so that you can go back and listen to that whole conversation. There is something really powerful about listening to yourself speak, to watching the way that you speak in meetings. Uh, it will give you all kinds of clues on ways that you can soften your tone, <clears throat> use voice inflection, smile instead of have a serious facial expression, listen to yourself, watch yourself so that you can gain that access. The other thing is, is that once you find out that maybe you are being aggressive in meetings, just say, I'm sorry, this is not how I want to come across. And I really want you to hold me accountable. The worst thing you can do is say, no, I'm not. This is your problem, not mine. That will never build a relationship. And in any relationship, it's a two-way street. Yes, maybe the team or that person might be being too sensitive, but that's, uh, it doesn't mean that you don't have a responsibility to pay attention to that feedback, to watch your tone, to consider how aggressive you're being uh, in a meeting, and to dial it back, to take that feedback, because the relationship is really important. You've got to have that kind of relationship. And if that person's brave enough to say it, then you need to take it seriously and do something about it. If it does turn out that this person is just being more sensitive, and that's not actually what the case is uh, with the rest of your teammates, then work on that relationship one-on-one. -on -one. But the worst thing you can do is blow off the feedback, say, I don't care, this is your problem, not mine, because that will eventually spread to the rest of the organization. So my advice to you is take it seriously, go digging, seek to understand, record yourself speaking, smile more in meetings, try to use a uh, more positive tone of voice. I promise you it will make it easier for her people to speak up no matter what, even if you don't think that you have this problem. All right. So that's uh, my advice for this week. Hopefully you found that useful. I look forward to hosting you next week when I have another great interview on leadership. So be sure to tune in. And if you like this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can get these videos. They come out every other week. You can also rate the podcast, write a review, subscribe to it, share it. That's always appreciated. Thanks so much. Have a great day. See you next week.